we're here today to worship the Lord and to honor our mothers. Not only are we commanded to honor our mothers, but I would tell you that it is the sensible and loving thing to do. Many of us wish that we had our moms here today so we could honor them, remember them, and love on them. So if you have your mom here, uh, take advantage of that while you can. I, I heard about a six-year-old um, boy that was separated from his mom in the grocery store, and he started hollering out, Martha, Martha, Martha. And of course, the mom, embarrassed, came running back to where the boy was real quickly, and she kind of pulled the boy aside and said, son, you, you don't call your mom by her first name. You know, I, I'm mom, you call me mom. And he said, well, I know that mom, but I looked around and saw there was a lot of moms in the store and was afraid they'd all come to me, you know? So I know that the world is full of mothers, but there's only one mother who is special. That's our mom. And uh, you know, there's nobody like our moms. And so we honor our moms today. We glorify Jesus Christ today when we honor motherhood because it has been designed by God, created by God, and blessed by God. There's something about the gift of a mother and how God uses her to shape and to mold our lives. It makes us defensive about who she is, and we do everything we can to protect her. It's astounding how that you can... Uh, you can uh, lambast and be pretty hard on just about anybody, but when you talk about somebody's mama, buddy, that's uh, fighting words right there. I wonder how many fights have taken place down through the history of time because somebody talked about somebody's mama, you know, and uh, you're going to fight and do whatever at all costs to protect her. There's just something instinctive when mo in most of us that we want, we have a desire in our hearts to honor our mothers. I've heard somewhere that Mother's Day is the second largest commercialized marketing day in the United States. And I think that's probably true. Um, they say that Hallmark makes most of its money on Valentine's Day and Mother's Day. I often wonder why isn't Father's Day in there, you know? <laughs> but it isn't. <laughs> But Mom's Day is, and uh, I'll tell you, restaurants are going to be packed out today. Uh, I have found out through the years there's not many restaurants in Winter Haven that takes reservations. But if you found one that, that, that will, uh, hopefully you've got one there today. And uh, I'll tell you the good thing about coming to our church is we get out before a lot of the churches get out. So you're going to be able to beat a lot of them out there today. That is if the preacher gets out in time today and he doesn't preach too long, which I'm not going to make any promises because <laughs> every time I promise, I go long, okay? So it's better that I don't. But, you know, you think about that today. The restaurants are full. They're packed on Mother's Day. Our churches are full on Mother's Day because moms want all, all their children to be in church with her on her day. And no matter what we buy, mom, or where we take her to eat, it certainly falls short of what mom deserves. That's for sure, of all that she has done. And she has paid a price, and she has given much, and there's nothing quite like a good mother. Nothing like it, I promise you. In fact, one of them comes to us in the scripture today, the mother of Jesus. I've been preaching I've been pastoring 42 years, but I don't know that I've ever preached on the mother of Jesus on Mother's Day. But we're going to speak about her today. In fact, in verse 25, it says, And there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother. His mother, she's standing there. Jesus is hanging on the cross, and he has been brutally beaten, and blood is running down his beaten and bruised body. He has been forced to carry the cross up through Jerusalem, climbing and going outside of the city of Jerusalem there. It is there at Calvary where he is nailed to the cross. He is left there to hang and to die. There are various, group, various groups of people that are standing there that are observing the death of Jesus. You had the Roman soldiers there that were mocking him. 
There was a handful of Jews saying, See, we told you he wasn't who he said he was. And there you have two thieves that were hanging on the cross, and one of them believed in Jesus. And Jesus said, Today you'll be with me in paradise. And the other who would not believe and cursed him and died. There weren't many supporters there that day. But in John 19, it says that Jesus looks down from his dying position and there he sees his mother. His mother's there. Can you imagine what it takes to stand at a cross and watch your child die? Or no, I shouldn't say that he died, he was killed. And I should even say that he was crucified. Standing there watching your child crucified. Mary watched her son crucified on a cruel cross. And I believe that Mary is an example of a good mother. Three ways that I would tell you today. First of all, a good mother knows how to sacrifice. It says there in verse 26, When Jesus therefore, therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by. Now notice Mary is standing there, and there is one other disciple that is standing there by the name of John. Where are the others that walk with Jesus? Where is Peter and Matthew, and how come James isn't there? Where are those who so that suppose that they walk with Jesus and they said that they would never leave him? You know, that we're here with you through all of it. Where are those disciples? Let's skip over the disciples. Yeah, they weren't there other than John. What about the 5,000 people that Jesus fed on more than one occasion when they were hungry and they saw the miracle that took place? Where are they at the cross? Where are all those people who he had healed of the various diseases that they had? Where are they? And where were the people who had lined up the streets of Jerusalem only one week before shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord? Where are all these people? It just goes to show that people often are with you in the good times, but let some trouble come your way. You know what I'm talking about? Let some trouble come your way and you'll find out who are your real friends. Someone said, take attendance while you're down and you'll find out who really has your back. And I think that's a pretty good statement. I'm sure that the disciples aren't there because they are afraid of the Jewish religious authorities that they have come, they've taken Jesus, they are crucifying him on a cross, and they're thinking that they're going to be looking for the followers of Jesus too. And so perhaps they're afraid. They're in danger of their lives, fear that way. And yet he is dying on the cross. His mother, who has been a staunch supporter of Jesus, his mother who has supported him in his ministry, his mother decides that she is going to be there because she is willing to sacrifice her own well-being for the best interest of her son. And what makes a good mother is when she says no to herself because she's going to do in what is in best interest of her children. We all know moms like that. Many of you mothers today are like that. We all can thank God for our moms who have denied themselves just so they could invest in the lives of their children. And I hope that you can recognize in most cases that your mama sacrificed for your well-being. Children, grandchildren, I hope you recognize that today. Mama, I know that it's been difficult for you, but sometimes it seems as you have traveled on in your journey as a mother, that it seems to you that there isn't going to be that good of a return on your investment. You know, sometimes you get to feeling that way. Is that not true, Mom? And I'm not telling the truth today. You've been there. You feel like, you know, I don't know that I'm going to see that good of a return on my investment. 
But when they walk across that high school or college stage, mom, it will be worth it. It'll be worth it at that time. And when they move out of your house and start paying their own bills, it'll be worth it at that point. And when they bring back that grandchild and put that little baby into your arms, I promise you, it will be worth it. That's even worth it for granddad too. You know, those little precious ones. But greatest of all, I would tell you, when they accept Jesus Christ into their hearts and their lives, and they start clinging to the rock of ages and standing firm on the foundation of the Word of God, moms, hear me today, it will be worth it. It'll be worth it. There was an NBA player, they're in their, they're in their finals right now, and uh, you hear when they win championships, many times they get up and give speeches and say things. And I don't know how many times through the years that I've heard NBA players or NFL or whoever it might be, uh, college, talk about their mothers. And uh, there was one NBA player that started crying, talking about his mother, and had everybody else crying out uh, of those that he was uh, uh, speaking in front of. He under, and the thing of it was, he understood the sacrifices that mama had made in order to get him where he was. He understood that. And moms, your child may not ever be an NBA player or earn a seven-figure contract, but there's something about making an investment of yourself and sacrificing for your child that brings back a return in a reward that is well worth it. You, you say, well, it hasn't happened yet. Well, just hang on, okay? Just hang on. I want you to see today that Mary sacrificed herself. Our moms sacrificed themselves. Second of all, a good mother knows how to stand. It says in verse 26, when Jesus therefore saw his mother standing by. Here Mary stands at the cross and she's watching her son crucified. Have you ever wondered what maybe Mary was thinking while she was standing there at the cross? Here Mary stands at this cross, but she remembers 33 years earlier. She remembers how all this journey began with her and Jesus 33 years before. It began with angels. It began with proclamations that her son would save the world from their sins. That's what was talked about 33 years ago, earlier. And uh, that was her son that would save the world from their sins. And I believe when Mary found out that she was pregnant, that she began to do what every mother does. And that is, she, begins, she began to dream of greatness for her child. And I think every, every mom does that. But now she's standing here in John chapter 19 at a cross. She's at a cross. This is not what she had dreamed of for Jesus. She might have been thinking the angel didn't tell me that it was going to end up this way. And moms, I think you can learn from Mary here today. I think you can learn how to deal with your child who might end up in a disappointing place. I hear all the time as a pastor, I have moms that write me or text me or call me or speak to me at church and say, and speaking about their children, they will say, this is not what I envisioned for her or this is not what I expected from him. You know, I hear phrases like that all the time. Hey, every mom Every mama wants her children on the honor roll. Every mom wants that. But there are some moms here to know what it's like to have your child make some disappointing decisions. They made some decisions in life that are so disappointing to you. So who knows what it is like for your child other than a mom when they make it dis disappointing. Who knows the heartache and the hurt of that? You never thought that that college money would be spent on bail money. You never thought that you would be a grandmother before the age of 45. 
Mothers know, you know, you can be disappointed by your children. If you've lived any length of time, you know that that's true. Now I hear that from moms all the time, but yet I want you to notice something here. Mary stands. I'm sure this isn't what she had prayed for. I'm sure this isn't what she had expected. But hear this, mothers. I want you to learn from Mary. This is a very important thing, and it's so important. I put it on the screen so you could remember it. You could have it in your notes there. Mary understood the great strength of a mother is the ministry of presence. That's important. That's important. Good moms say, even though you haven't lived out what I have desired for you, even though you didn't make the choices that I have prayed for, and even though your life didn't go in the direction that I would dream that it would, I'm still your mother, and I will show up, and I'll stand with you. That's a mom. Even in places that break my heart, she would say, it is God who gives our mom strength to stand even when her world has been turned upside down. And that's true of not all moms, but many moms that that is true. Listen, anybody can show up to the graduation. Anybody can, anybody can show up when the name is on the, roll, on the honor roll. They want to be there uh, for those accolades. Anybody can be there when the money comes in. But it takes a good mother who will continue to stand and to stand for what is right when she has been disappointed by what her child has done. And I thank God for mothers who show up. Moms who show up. They stand there even when it hurts. They stand there. Imagine how helpless Mary must have felt. Her son is in a place that she couldn't do anything about it. There's not a thing she could do. Jesus is, as we know, is living out the will of the Father. Even though you think Mary perhaps doesn't understand all of what God the Father is doing. Just as the disciples, how many times did Jesus tell them that this was going to transpire? And yet they still didn't understand at that point. But we find Jesus is living out the will of God, but she must have felt utterly helpless to change the situation. Instinctively, moms desire, moms desire to save their children. Instinctively, they are that way. But one of the most heartbreaking times for a mom is when her child gets into a place that she can't get them out of. That's a very heartbreaking place for mom to be. There's no phone call that she can make. There's no check that she can write in order to get them out of this situation. Listen to me today, mothers. I'm going to help you. This is important. God has given mothers a great gift that can change their children. God's given you that gift. And when your child gets to a bad, bad place and you don't feel like there's anything that you can do about it, don't you give in to that. That's what Satan would want you to do. Don't you give in to that because the Lord has put within the heart of every mother a gift that can change her children. And I submit to you that that gift has changed the world. I could give you illustration after illustration, and I don't have time today, of how this gift has changed the world. And what gift is that, Pastor? When a mama kneels down before the Lord, when a mama begins to bow her head, when a mama lifts her hands to God, and when a mama begins to pray and call on God, hear me today, great things happen. When a mother does that. And all we need praying mothers in our homes today, praying mothers in our churches that know that God hears the prayers of moms. God hears their prayers. God give us some Hannahs who will kneel before the Lord and see God do some great things. 
God give us some jockey beds that won't allow their child to be destroyed no matter what the government says. Mama's going to be there and protect that child. A mother's prayer for her children is powerful and it can move mountains as God leads. I thank God a whole lot of us here today can say, I had a praying mother and I had a praying grandmother. I thank God for my, many of you knew my sweet mom, godly lady. Thank God, I know she prayed for me. I know my Granny Bivens and my Granny Hodges prayed for me. I thank God for their prayers. They called out to the Lord on my behalf. They called my name. No doubt many times concerned for me of what direction maybe that I would take as a teenager and they're praying, God, please take care of my son, my grandson, Mark. God, please help him to stay close to the Lord. You know, only eternity is going to reveal of how God shielded us and protected us simply because mom knew how to pray and she prayed for us. I thank God for praying mothers. Thank God for that. When mothers pray, God moves in mighty ways. Mother, when you don't know what else to do with your child and maybe there isn't anything else that you can do, remember, you can pray and trust God. That's what you can do. And when you've got a child that is addicted to drugs or alcohol, pray and trust God. When you are hanging, when you have young people that are hanging with the wrong crowd and you're concerned about that and you don't know what to do, pray and trust God. I want you to know Mary sacrificed herself, but she also stood when faced with this disappointment. She stood. She stood where she ought to stand. And then third of all, we find a good mother knows how to support. While Mary is standing at the cross, you know that she's hearing a lot of things that they're saying about their son, her son. Because we were just there in Israel a couple of, a couple of months ago, and as you go outside the city there, there are oft times that the, the Romans would have a crucifixion out by where it was a very heavily trafficked area uh, to where people would travel. So all the coming by would see and that there would be many people that come, would come from inside the city to come out and watch these people that were crucified. They were there, there's crowds of people. She is hearing the crowd taunting Jesus and the Roman soldiers that are mocking him and the religious uh, rulers, leaders of that day that are ridiculing Jesus. She hears them say, I told you he wasn't who he said he was. You know, if you are who you are, say you are, come down off of that cross and save yourself. She hears all these words. And yet Mary remembers back in her mind to what Gabriel said in Luke chapter 1 and verse 33. She remembers that it was said, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. She remembers this of what was said. Gabriel told her that. And although she is hearing what others are saying, although she is surrounded by the taunts of others, and although she hears the labels that have been placed upon her son, I believe what makes her a good mother is that she refuses to give up on what God spoke to her about her son. She refuses to give up. She did not give up on her son. And I would tell you, at the end of the day, that is what every child desires and deserves from their mom. That's what they desire. They want a mother in their life who says, no matter what, a label, what label a teacher places upon me or no matter what limitations some people might give to me, no matter what the world says about me, uh, I've got a mom that is my cheerleader and she believes in me and she never gives up on me. That's what a child desires. I believe a child deserves. They need a mom like that. 
And praise God for moms who have told their children that God has great things in store for them. Just follow him and just trust him. I don't know how many times I heard my mom say, God's got great things in store for you, son. No matter what limitations or roadblocks that have come in your life, what a joy it is to have a good mama that believes that you're better than that. Have any of you ever had your mama say, son, you're better than that? You know, you've had that. We've all had it some time or another. A good mama that told us that. When this corrupt world has a, affected your life and your mother knows that God has called you to something that is greater than that, and he has, and your mother knows that, she knows this old world has nothing to offer you. She knows that this world does not satisfy. i tell you what your mother knows. She knows, a godly mother knows that only Jesus can satisfy your soul. And only he can change your heart and make you whole. He'll give you peace you, you never knew. Sweet love and joy in heaven too. And mama knows for only Jesus can satisfy your soul. Nobody else can. Oh, there might be a little satisfaction here and there. But as far as complete satisfaction, only Jesus can satisfy your soul. I want you to see as we close out two things. Mary's support came from the helpful ones. Now there stood by Jesus in verse 25, his, his, Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary and the wife of Clopas and Mary Magdalene. Now these were some women who were there to support even though Jesus was not their biological child. Uh, we're talking about some women who recognize that God had given them a gift. And that gift was uh, that they would help, even though it wasn't their child. They were willing to help. They were willing to show up and do what needed to be done. On this Mother's Day, I say let's don't only honor our mother who birthed us. Let's, let's honor all these women who have had an impact in our life. And I submit to you that I've had a lot of women down through the years. I could go through a lot of Sunday school teachers that have had impacts on my life, a lot of people. I thank God for those teachers who showed up. I'm talking about school teachers because school teachers can make a difference in a child's life. I thank God for my sixth grade teacher, Mrs. Hitchcock, over here in Brigham Elementary School. They used to have sixth grade there. They don't now. But uh, that was in the olden days, okay? I admit it. But uh, Mrs. Hitchcock believed in me and got me on track with good grades. And I thank God for that. We thank God for those neighbors who show up, those sweet women. I think about the sweet women that in my neighborhood who brought me food to my house when my sweet wife went to be with Jesus. Thank God for them. They didn't have to do that. Thank God they did. I think about our junior church workers who every week show up to do the work of God. And, uh, and it takes work, it takes effort to do that, uh, to go and to love on those children. And we've got some week after week that love on those children and wouldn't have it any other way. I think in my life when I was in sixth or seventh grade that Wansey Woods in one of our classes taught me the word of God. And one of the things that I remember that she taught me that it, even at my age I was as a young, just a young boy, that it was never too early to start praying for a godly mate. I remember Wansey Woods taught me that. And I started praying as a young man that God would give me a good wife. And he did. I can credit Wansey Woods a lot to that. She told me to pray. And I prayed. You know, we all should thank God for those women who didn't give us birth. But they decided and they determined to believe that God had something good for us and they invested in our lives. Thank God for that. 
They invested in us. They invest in our lives. We think of all the women that showed up and supported us. They didn't have to, but thank God they did. Thank God for that. As Mary stood watching her son go through an unjust tragedy, I'm sure that it helped Mary make it through just having other people, some other women that just stood there. Maybe they didn't know what to say. Maybe they didn't know what to do. They just stood there with her. They must have said, this isn't easy. We don't know what to do, but we're going to stand by you. We're here with you. You might say, it wasn't my child that did that. It wasn't my child that got into that predicament. But my friend, it could be or could have been either way. So just stand by that mom that needs help. I'm telling you, our world is full of moms today that need somebody to stand by them. You say, well, she got herself in that predicament. Look at the life she lived. That may be true. But my friend, they need somebody to show Christian love to them and stand by them. Just come and stand with them. The psalmist tells us, defend the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted. And needy. Then, second of all, we find Mary's support came from the Holy One. Thank God for that. I like to end up on that point today in verse 26 and 27. He said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. Jesus was telling John the disciple to take care. One of the last things he did was to take care of his mother, giving her to John for care. Mary has sacrificed for her child. Mary has stood with her child. Mary has supported her child because she knows that she has holy help. She knows that. This mother makes it by the power of God. She stands there at the cross without her husband. History kind of reveals that Joseph must have passed off the scene. We don't know much about it, but apparently he had died. And yes, there she is without the support of a spouse. She is there hanging, uh, having to do all this by herself. She is there without the love of a man to help her bear the burden, to help her carry this heavy load that she's got. So let me just stop and say today, we have some single moms in our church They have to bear the burden all by themselves. They do. There are some here that have to be both mama and daddy. And some of you grew up in homes like that. She was both mama and daddy. And a little mama, let me say to you today, it might not be the way that you intended it to be. But our God loves you so much and he'll help you every step of the way. He's there to help you. He's there to hold you up. He's there to help you to stand. We give God the glory for helping that mom who's had to make it all by herself. But we thank God for all of our mothers, all the godly women who have taken a stand for truth and for righteousness for the Lord. When the founder of the Methodist Church, John Wesley, John and Charles Wesley, when John was a student at Oxford University, he was shocked at the amount of drinking done by the students. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this is 300 plus years ago. You can imagine what it'd be like today. He would really be shocked. But after writing to his mother for counsel about this, this is the words that he received. My dear son, remember that anything which increases the authority of the body over the mind is an evil thing. That's what his mother, Susanna wrote, Wesley wrote to her son at the university. And I thank God for moms that direct our hearts and our minds in the right direction towards the things of God. They have been our great teachers. Moms, thank you. You're our great teachers. Thank God for that. 
a London editor submitted to Winston Churchill for his approval a list of all those who had been Churchill's teachers. And Churchill returned the list with his comment. He said, you have admitted to mention the greatest of all my teachers, my mother. And she is the greatest of all teachers. I'm, at a, I'm appalled today that there would be people that would think that it is the public school system's responsibility to have control and to teach our children of what is right and wrong. That's not their responsibility. They're there to learn their arithmetic or math, algebra, writing, reading, all those things. You can tell I'm old-fashioned, can't you? <laughs> and, uh, but they're there to learn that. Moms, it's our responsibility. Dads, our responsibility to teach them the things of God. We're to teach them the things of the Lord. We all thank God for our mothers. And if she's alive today, please let her know how much you love her. The Bible says in Proverbs 31, 28, her children rise up and call her blessed, her, ch her husband also, and he praises her. I'll close with this illustration. In the 1990s, some arsonists set off many fires in Lynn, Massachusetts. A family lived on the fifth floor of the apartment building there where the fire was, and the husband was a fireman. The fire, uh, the fire department heard about the fire. They got there, and of course, this fireman is there too, and they are working frantically, doing everything they can to put the fire out. They've pretty much managed to clear out the first four floors but they can't get up to the, to the fifth floor. They can't get up there. And um, you can imagine how heartbreaking it was for this man and for all the firemen to know that one of their families is up there. They couldn't get his wife out, his baby out there. But about, about the time that they thought that all hope was lost, there appeared burnt beyond recognition. That little mama, carrying her baby in a wet blanket, protected the baby, but once she got out, she collapsed and died. She gave her life for that child. That's what moms do. But friend, I'm gonna tell you, that's what Jesus did for all of us on the cross of Calvary. He gave his life for all of us. We've, we've talked about moms today, but we talked about Jesus dying on the cross. Why did he die on the cross? Well, because sin came into this world. You remember the Garden of Eden where sin came in? God used to have a wonderful time of fellowship with Adam in the cool of the evening, but now that fellowship is broken because sin has come. Because our God is a holy and a righteous God, and he cannot look upon sin. And so that fellowship is broken and it broke the heart of God the same way mom's heart is broken many times. It broke the heart of God so much so that he provided a way possible. God found a way. And that was that Jesus had to come. He had to give his own son to come and die on a cruel cross of Calvary there. And he took upon himself the sins of the whole world. It had to be someone who was perfect. Someone without sin, and only Jesus was that way. He walked on the face of the earth, never with any sin that you could find on him. But there, that day on Calvary, he took upon him the sins of the world. He took upon him your sin and, and my sins. And there he was crucified and he died. Thank God he rose again. He came forth from the grave. But the point is today, we're all sinners but Jesus paid the price for us. All you have to do is repent of your sins and ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and your Savior. Would you call on him today? Would you say, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Come into my heart and save me and give me eternal life. I believe in what your son did for me on the cross of Calvary, and I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Would you pray that today? If you'll pray that prayer, and you mean it in your heart, Jesus Christ will come. The Holy Spirit will come and live and indwell you. And you're going to live with Jesus Christ for all eternity in heaven. Heaven will be your home. I'm going to heaven. I'm going there and I'm going to see my mama there one day. I'm 
and see my wife there. One day, greatest of all, I'm going to see Jesus. He made it all possible for me. Come and receive Jesus today. Would you come?